We are a crafty bunch here at Linux Gamecast, but in order to get on with our craftiness, we need some craft support. Again. Get no. crafty with it. Nah, 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 This, <laughs> wish you were watching another episode, was brought to you by... <laughs> And welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how-tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. How is everyone doing this fantastic, hot, sexy Saturday night? I'm Vin Stone, here at LGC Actual in beautiful downtown Athens, Jordan. Athens, I'm in Jordan, horrible yes. Pain. Hey, I'm man. <laughs> hey, man. It's Canada's <laughs> favorite snowflake up north in Torontosville, one Jordan's thing. With the sexy tiles behind him. Yeah. And then there's Pedro. Hey. Um, and then there's <laughs> Pedro. <laughs> Portugal's number one pirate, Pedro Mateus. <laughs> Why do you yeah. think I'm not allowed back in? It, Actually, that's not true. Yeah. I'm going back in January sometime. Oh, man. Better luck next time. <laughs> uh, together with you at home in Shadowrun Dynamic, joining us live, helping us form Cocaine Voltra. <laughs> Before we get started, would you like to see what's going on in each other's life organs? Did anybody write anything other than me? Nope. I get to go first. No, no. Yay. No. Go ahead. <laughs> go nuts. It's all you, baby. Five dollars, baby. Mm, look at it. <laughs> look at it. No, no, we're not talking about my haircut. Nay, we're talking about the Steam controller that I ordered and it actually showed up, at, which I used. It... I, I genuinely took this and I'm like, oh, okay, I'll use you instead of the other Steam controller that was sitting on the desk. It works. That's brilliant. But anyway, more to the point. Uh, Capcom, you need a bag of dicks with DRM, man. I got locked out of a video game on Linux for the first time ever. <laughs> yeah, Devil May Cry is playing around with Proton versions, you know, getting that how-to together, that guide together that I put up. Go check that out. We'll talk about it in a minute. And... The game was like, yeah, come back tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, part of that is good, right? No. Uh, Linux is now no, good no, enough no, that no. even DRM works properly. <laughs> well, there's that. I mean, I mean that that's not a good thing at all. No, <laughs> I, I, I don't see sort of any any sort of redemptive quality about that statement. Uh, More games. <laughs> Do, that well, don't work. Okay, you you can the system to lock me out of a game I just bought uh, works fine. Let's get to work on that easy anti cheat. I'm looking forward to that. Also, yeah, that'd be nice. <laughs> in closing, shopping for network cards can die in a fire. What's new with you, Pedro? Other than you smoking milk? Yes, uh, evaporated milk. The, the mm. flavor concentrate is actually really nice. Uh, but. Um, Actually, there hasn't been much going on because, yeah, it's the week before uh, most people go on vacation in work, uh, at work. So, uh, yeah, it's um, it's been busy. There's been a lot of people going in just trying to get everything done, and they managed to break their laptops a lot in the process. Mm. So, <laughs> yeah, the, we've been dealing with that. That that's been nice. <laughs> Am I going blind? Because I don't see a ticket. <laughs> There's been a lot of that. Uh, have you logged a call? Yes. What's the call reference number? Oh, screw you. It's like, <laughs> okay. damn you. Curse you, Mateus. Next One, time. two, three, four, five. <laughs> That's a combination to my luggage. What's new with you, Jordan? Anything new? Uh, well, I've I've been do I've been doing a lot of like plumbing the depths of Amazon networking because I'm doing a project at work involving setting up a bunch of networks and mm -hmm. automating that stuff. So it's it's fun. I I haven't gotten to flex my network engineer muscles in a while, and I'm I'm remembering how much I actually enjoy that. Um, oh, you do? Yeah. I need I, to let I, you. I, little, I, you need to log into this router then. Sure. <laughs> and see if you can untangle the mess I've made. Uh, I'll, I'll send you an invoice by going right. Um, yeah, and uh, and I hit a overhead press PR, which is nice because that's a very slow moving lift. And now I can hoist Pedro over my head five times. Do you think there will ever be Yay. a day that you will be able to pick up the horse? I mean, the horse is already pretty light. It's decomposed away because we beat it to death so long ago. It's the steam. Yes. Update of the week. Oh, need to press it. Ah, there's a new beta oh. update. Oh my god. Um, Sock it to at least me. on December 5th, if you scroll down to the Linux section, you'll see that there's a little bit more uh, work being done on 
the container runtime. So uh, containerized yep. Steam, making sure that games run in their own C group sandbox, uh, is continuing to progress. We're probably I don't know. I'm I'm thinking probably mid next year, like in June July, we're gonna start seeing like actual Steam containers. Mm. Um, but. Oh, you know, it's Valve time, right? I could be wrong. Uh, there's also a couple of remote play fixes because, oh my god, that has been the... That is like the current killer feature on Steam, being able to play games that only support local multiplayer when they should really have online multiplayer. You know what? My, I, I have a special place in my heart for that because I just, like, it straight up get to click a pain button for you for, like, 15 minutes straight. Right, yeah. So <laughs> so, so now, now remote play will remember your volume settings per oh, game, boo. which is great. My ears, thank you, mop. Up, up. <laughs> Go watch that supercut if you're curious. When we did Death Road to Canada, I, I I stitched together that like 15 or 20 minute. I condensed it to a minute of Jordan screaming. I watched I mean, it at I mean, night when I got Jordan screaming. I can give that to you right now. Oh, you could, but it wouldn't be the same, baby. But yeah, this one was a chunky update. Uh, for usually when we get Steam betas, uh, you get like one two maybe three changes and then they all add up to like a big um stable release this one's huge mm. seriously i mean look at it it's that that's big so which is nice <laughs> yeah, i'm down with it uh the volume thing that's definitely a big thing and uh i'm glad that's fixed does it still launch in full screen though you were playing. I think it, uh, I think it does. Uh, they should they should add like a little toggleable window. Just watch this in like a yeah. This, uh, I, I I don't know what would be what would be the default window size though. It would probably be seven. Not full. Which would be, mis which would be miserable on these monitors. You know, thirty eight forty <laughs> by twenty one just below that. It's like not that. Um. Oh man, <laughs> sp speak, speaking of four K blues, man. Dude. Okay, we got the chairquisition, man. I uh, that 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 uh, pixel filter. You can see the pixels that make up the pixels that make up the pixels. We're, we're definitely going to have to talk about that. Uh, something that we brought up before is Gamer OS yes. and Gameras. Just don't call it Arch. Yeah, it, it's totally not Arch, despite you know it being Arch. But yeah, it's a uh, Gameras ten. Uh, it's it's out. It comes with Linux five three thirteen one, Mesa nineteen two six. Still no Mesa nineteen point three. So if you have a Navi card, not yet. Not just yet. Uh, and the NVIDIA 44036 drivers. It also comes with the uh, Steam Tweaks, uh, the latest version. The SteamOS Compositor Plus, which I think is a very, very, very nice thing that they're doing. Uh, because I've been running the Steam uh, Compositor Plus on El Cheapo. And it fixes, it actually fixes a bunch of issues with um, Dead Cells and Feral Screen of Nope. Because those... Um, with the default uh, Steam compositor, they like to spawn behind the uh, Steam big picture mode. So you can't see what's happening. It's, the, the just, other, it's there, the, it's the running, other, the other you thing, can hear it. The, the other I, thing that came in with uh, this release is, uh, I thought it was like a Bonzi Buddy thing, but it's called Steam Buddy. And it's for <laughs> installing like non-Steam apps in the big picture section. Uh, um, big picture session because it's just a web front end for like managing mm. uh, steam stuff which i guess i guess is okay if you're going to be using gameros as like a one-stop shop for your like arcade tv what box are your thoughts on like the steam box as a whole i mean are we at the point to where that's viable like even with gamer os to put that in like okay i'm, I'm gonna throw this in the living room and this is gonna be my jam for playing the oh video ab games. Ab absolutely especially with proton um mm. yep it's, it's 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 just a matter of like the, the 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 core concept of the Steam box was never really compatible with like a cheap system. You can you can build one using like a lot of used parts, but for like a net new product, for like something that like a company is <laughs> going to sell, yeah, I don't think I don't think it was ever like particularly feasible. Yeah, especially with people like Falcon Northwest, it's like, oh yeah, like a PC console for the living room, five thousand dollars. Yeah. Hey man, <laughs> some people can make it rain a like that. <laughs> uh, Proton updater, Glorious Egg Rolls got a um, little help, a little side job. Yes, a little bit of a help. Uh, to be fair, um, the this script is an updated version of another script that already existed. And uh, what this does, it basically lets you pull down the latest version of uh, Proton GE, uh, and it'll 
if you already have it installed, it'll just patch your currently installed version to the latest. Uh, and that's the thing that makes it faster uh, than the original script. Because the original script, yeah, it just pulled down the latest version, replaced what you had with the latest version, and that's it. This one, it goes, oh, you already have version X? Okay, we're just going to download the patches, patch those, boom, done. But it's, it's, so, it's downloading like the binaries, right? It's not actually pulling the source and doing... No, it's, it's just uh, updating the binaries, yeah. Does this work inside of Steam? Like uh, it, it is just a Proton GE updater. Basically, mm-hmm. wherever you drop Proton GE, you just uh-huh. point it at that and say update that. See you- the the thing with like Proton, I, I've used it, played around with it. Uh, for the stuff I've played, I've not seen any like, oh, this is great. But I, it's a great project by itself because you get mm-hmm. more up to date versions of D9VK and DXVK along with Wine. Yeah. But it's of limited use. Uh, for me, because I never remember to update it. If yeah, the, the, this this seems like it could be something you could stick in like a bash RC to mm. just like when yeah, you, when you or just in, set up just a cron jobs in. like every yeah. week. Run this, boop, done. <laughs> but you have to do it. You have to do it like per prefix, right? Or um... uh, no, it's it's a launcher. It it gets treated like a single Proton version, hmm. and mm. it shows up in the Proton versions dropdown. So it's it's just that launcher that you need to update. The prefix is whenever you launch a prefix for a game that was using Proton GE, it'll probably need to update. Do like the wine setup things, like okay. oh new version. Hold on. Right on. Right well, on. Speaking on, of Proton, on the, on the bright side. Now you can now you can find out a more easy way to uh, I don't know pick up games that are going on sale right like um, so uh, report filters are a feature that's been added to Proton DB so now you can actually search based on the level of effort so like if you want to tinker with it if you just want to like click Steam Play or if you just want to install it on Steam and click Play it'll you can search based on that uh, yeah uh, Hello Kitty Island Adventure um, no Hello Kitty so, Racing. Uh, Oh yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Um, you can you can also filter it based on like distro or GPU or CPU. I would like so, to everyone know that Blade Kitten Platinum rating. Nice. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, more more filtering options are coming down the pipe for like controller support and stuff like that. But it, it just makes Proton DB a little easier to use. Um, it makes it so that now you can you can more easily locate games that are eligible for you know getting up and running fairly easily. So that when it goes on sale on Humble or for like a one of the eighty million sales that Steam runs, you can be like, "Ooh, this has a platinum rating," and it just like works out of the box. I'm going to pick that up. The yeah, this is first off, Proton DB has become a very valuable resource. I'm glad it's a thing. And but navigating this is like growing issues of finding a reliable way to take the reports that we currently get and. Make them, you know, whether or not oh, it works for me and by works for me means that, hey, I kind of it blinked for a second uh, versus <laughs> can you just launch it out of the box, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. One, 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 one of the yeah, there's a lot of people parameters. giving platinum ratings to games that require some massive workarounds. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they're, they're also going to be adding some uh, filtering options for like performance. So like if you're OK with running it at 30 frames a second versus you want like full 60 or 120. Um, yeah, because like now, now, now it's trying to codify what me is. So when someone says it works for me, you can better figure out if that that person is also you, right? Yeah. That's true, and that's something you definitely run into. You see it all the time with, oh, how's the performance? The por- performance is acceptable, and to some people, I'm not knocking you. I'm just saying some people, 720p, 28 frames a second, yeah, it's acceptable. Which, <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Spe- spe- speaking of uh, speaking of lowering settings, dude. Black Mesa complete. Oh my god! It's you finally can play here. Zen now. Oh oh. What the fuck? <laughs> um, it's it's available. You can. It's a beta for Black Mesa, so you, can, you have to opt into it. They tell you which one to go to. It's just public beta. Um, they add a bunch of fixes, improvements. Uh, but this is this is sort of like the the first the the demo version of the final release. Mm. Um. So Zen is implemented. Uh, the end game stuff is implemented. It's not particularly balanced yet. So they're saying like we're keeping an eye on reports um, for uh, reports and feedback for this particular beta branch, so that we can better tweak the balance and make sure that the game is challenging but not like completely fuck you unfair. They're also saying though that there's some uh, there might be some performance <laughs> issues. So don't be afraid to drop your settings, whatever that means. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm so to- scared. Hey man, one of the big updates for this on Linux, it launches now. 
Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> How take, long has it been? Six, it, seven months? Eight months? <laughs> it, it's been a minute, Pedro. But it does <laughs> take a minute to get launching to the point where I click play again. It's like, really? And it's like, oh, okay, then it launched. On the Threadripper on the 2060, I ran everything at UHD. Some people call it 4K, 2160p. It was getting between like 60 and 100. But, and this was everything just slammed to the right. Frame pacing, it's a bit shit. So so <laughs> the, the the real question now is, how long do you think it's going to take Synergy to get their stuff up and running with this? That's what I was getting to. Because, you know, Pedro was like, man, hurry up. Because then Pedro doesn't have to worry about what he's playing on Tuesdays for like a month. <laughs> to be fair, I already have the next game lined up after I'm done with OpenMW. <laughs> when do you plan on finishing that? Sometime like 2028? Or... Uh, I've been progressing the main quest pretty fast. <laughs> like, literally, I got Corpus and got cured in an hour last week. Oh, yeah, I, this every, week. <laughs> every time I turn in, you, 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 you're trying to like slaughter sky chicken so i'm just like i, I can't tell so Pedro, yeah that's just morrowind <laughs> is the next game you're gonna play unity daggerfall mm -mm. just start uh, doing no Elder it's Scrolls um, reverse order dark scrolls re uh dark, dark scrolls? scrolls no yes. dark, scrolls. <laughs> dark souls remaster dude it's some underground mod for dark souls man. yeah it's, it's only play you're playing dark souls but just with a scroll wheel oh man you play it in first person it's it's brilliant hey uh, something <laughs> yeah i can't make that joke this game has been out for a minute uh it used to be called greedy car saves uh now it's called gene shift it's a battle royale Gen turbo. Shift? it's uh what Gene shift gene shift i don't know gene shift i'm gene shift. gene shift deal with it it's <laughs> like gta one multiplayer battle royale they've got some updates they've improved the zombies which that's interesting you can get shotgun kills tilted camera angles uh new gameplay twist i didn't even get this far down um just 40 percent discounts got that going for it. it looks a lot better because now it's more 3d versus like uh Mm. It's kind of like isometric looking back at it, kind of like the original uh, Grand Theft Auto. But yeah, yeah, it was just top down, completely top yeah. down. <laughs> so yeah. it, it definitely looks a lot better than it did. Unfortunately, I launched this, and the first thing I get is it's halfway between like my main monitor and my side monitor. Um, don't mm. worry, side monitor, I, I love you too. Um, <laughs> so I drag that window and at 1080p on a 2080, it was barely chugging along at like 38 in the main menu. So it's like, as far as we're going with this. Mm. It, How, it does have the Cybertruck though. It does? Yeah. Um, <laughs> this one, this one's been around for a minute too. This is the, over the four year mark. Still in early yeah. access. Yeah, I mean, it, it was it was greedy car thieves when we originally started talking about it, and that mm -hmm. was like mm -hmm. a nonstop source of jokes for like two years. <laughs> That's a shame. Hey, uh, something that left me laughing about DRM and how I could eat all the dicks is Double May Cry Five. It took a minute looking through Proton. You're like, oh, it takes two seconds to get this together. This, however, is known as a lie. So I made a little guide of getting the Microsoft nonsense installed. What is it? Uh, MF uh, Plat? Media Foundation. Mm -hmm. That's the hotness that you got to get in there. However, once you get that stuck in, six easy steps. Well, five easy, one hard. Not really. It's really simple to get together. Um, it runs like an absolute boss. Uh, I played it at 1080p. I even streamed it last night. Uh, 1060, this thing's just chewing through the frames on the 2060, not having any issues with it whatsoever. So if you are devil curious and you want to plan, you can head over to LinuxGameCast.com. It's uh, right there for your don't, don't, don't viewing. you mean cry curious? Enjoyment. Motherfucker, did I stutter? No. Yes. <laughs> cry curious? Knock the <laughs> snow out of your ears. <laughs> no. It's cold and nice. <laughs> Oh man, uh, what do we have up next? Oh, right, that game. Hey, the same uh, with the Proton. Mm. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, one of the big announcements that came out this week was uh, Halo. The Halo uh, Master Chief Collection is now okay. available on Steam. Okay, okay we got to ask everyone watching ra ra raise their hands or yes or no. Have you ever played Halo? 
I not <laughs> trust I me. I played the first one. <laughs> that is not like my natural anti Microsoft whatever. I just like I've never had a platform to play Halo. On right, before. and and like yeah, you, you can hate on Microsoft all you want, but Halo's the Halo trilogy, like the first three games, are solid. Shooters. Well, I okay now here okay uh, well, that's debatable, well, but yeah, we'll get um, to the story in a minute. <laughs> I even went back, like, I watched all the cutscenes because I watched one, I was like, shit, that's an interesting story. Then I went back and somebody had stuck, and I was like, that's a really good story that I went and, like, read, like, the lore about it. And I was like, I'd watch that movie. But I've never played the game. No. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, the Master Chief Collection came out, and of course, you know, the Linux users being Linux users, like, let's get this running with Proton. And there were some issues, but, uh, yeah, uh, the GitHub, um, page for proton has a thread dedicated to the master chief collection obviously and people were because people weren't able to play it at all now someone managed to get a hack uh together to let it start unfortunately that start is all very well and good until it hits the uh the point where it starts asking for the easy anti-cheat uh authentication and of course Easy anti-cheat being easy anti-cheat and being owned by Epic means you can't play the game. Mm -hmm. Not to any significant uh, point yet, but apparently people are working on it. (laughs) Yeah, there is is a Glorious Eggroll branch available for uh, that people are trying to get uh, Master Chief Collection specifically working on. Um, And even, even then, I think like Civic was in the thread, like saying, yeah, we need like a proper implementation of this hack that (laughs) Yeah, uh, so that other other games <laughs> that uh, u- utilize this bit of technology will work. I got a legitimate question. Yeah. What do you think the under over? Do you think we will? Because EAC's been, oh, we're we're working on it for what two plus years. Mm-hmm. So however long Proton's been around, yeah, and, it's been a what a year and three well, or even four before months before that. They're like, oh, well, with the wine project, we've oh, seen yeah. fuck all from that. Other than, yeah. yeah, we're working on it. Pay no attention to the EAC behind the curtain. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm sure, like, in their JIRA, there is, like, a get working on Proton, get working on Linux. Yeah. And then, like, Tim Sweeney is in there just opening up new tickets that are, like, priority one, like, this, this capitalization is wrong. You need to go and make sure that everything what? uses, like, correct Camel uh, case. I honestly don't think he comes out of his money layer long enough to do that. Yeah. Right. Uh, but to be fair... Uh, Easy Anti Cheat does have a native Linux version mm-hmm. that works. Mm-hmm. Uh, there are a couple of games like uh, Robocraft, the one where you build your own robot and then you go to the arena and shoot other robots that other people built. Yeah, that uses an Easy Anti Cheat and it's Linux native and it works. Thing is, when Windows EAC sees Proton or Wine, uh, it just goes, uh, fuck you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Insurgency. Okay. Yeah. Yes. E- insurgency. E- Thank e- you, Pennywise. Right. That's another one. Um, <laughs> yeah. So hopefully we see some movement on that in 2020. Hmm? That that Maybe. would be very nice, Valve. I want to play Paladins again. That'd be great. Fingers, uh, fingers crossed. <laughs> hey, man. I heard Retro Booster got an HD remake. Yes. Yeah, so so some of you may not remember this. We used to. We've had a, we've had a long time fan. Our our the the our our justification for our existing is like oh yeah we have one fan who worked for NASA. Uh, Terry, yes. <laughs> uh, Terry, Terry Welsh. Um, he uh, he made a little game called Retro Booster, uh, which was done in OpenGL SDL, and we threw chairs at it. Uh, we'd covered its development for quite a while, and it was basically like a a shooter a shooter rescuer game where you have to okay, manage uh, thr- yeah thr- thrust with gravity and so on and so forth. Uh, someone has gone and like ripped them off wholesale and made a game out of it called Gravity Ace. Um, it looks it looks like a prettier version of Retro Booster. It actually has a bunch of pixel art, kind of reminiscent of something like Into the Breach, which I kind of like. Um, but it's the same sort of game. It's a cave flyer, like uh, Pedro said. You got to contest with gravity. You got to rescue people. You got to avoid getting exploded. And it's coming spoon. Mm-hmm. When we don't know. 2020 um, um his name was john watson but <laughs> you know we've seen games like retro booster was inspired by something else too yeah know. yeah it was yeah. cave flyer and uh lunar lander because you actually had to land to pick up the guys in this one as you see in the trailer apparently the guys just jump into I'm your ship. That. um <laughs> they kind of did that in retro booster too if you didn't smash them to so bits. we throw that in everyone's <laughs> direction uh something given it's got a level editor so i'm like all right that's true. Yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> do something blue. That's that's always fun. I like it when games include like stuff to make their own content or make your own content. Mm-hmm. Right. It, Never Winter Nights is still alive to this day. <laughs> both of you are still not Jordan, Pedro, and the one other person. That's it. Uh, there's actually a server that has oh. on average over forty. And it's just Pedro running 40 virtual machines. Coming up next, we speculate about NVIDIA and their 7 nanometer surprise. Mm, and also, showtime. also, Quake in my Godot? It's more likely than you think. We are a crafty bunch here at Linux Gamecast, but in order to get on with our craftiness, we need some support. Again. Get no. crafty with it. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, 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 nah. This <laughs> wish you were watching another episode was brought to you by <laughs> brought to you by the fine fine folks supporting the show uh, by heading on over to linuxgamecast.com mousing over that support uh, menu where you can get links to our Patreon Dude, or Amazon click on shit too while you're there Libre I mean, pay. you can mouse yeah. over there we'll mm-hmm. still love you I mean I mean uh, you can figure it out. I believe in you. We got Amazon wish list. We got a store. We got Bitcoin, all that good stuff. Um, being a Patreon is the best way to support us, though. You got a bunch of cool stuff. Um, we got shirts like, and shit. Oh, yeah. We, we got we got. We'll, 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 we'll get to that. There's a pillow, too. There's an LGC pillow if you want. Oh, to, like, no. If, I, I don't <laughs> hey, know what you would do with an LGC pillow. <laughs> I Maybe look at send it some way. photos to uh, Every... Pedro at LinuxGameCast.com. Send us some photos. If you got some of our merch, man, we can like put them up in the store. It'll be brilliant. Uh, we'll, oh, yeah. If, we'll if, if you want a model nope. for us. Ugh. Dude, Anyways, I look at uh, everything yeah. in a merch store as like Christmas gifts that will only breed confusion if you give no context with it. Confusion yep. and contempt. Yes. Confusion and contempt. Uh, but yeah, uh, Patreon's pretty cool. You get access. Being a Patreon gets you ask, access to our Discord, show notes. Uh, you can RSVP access. for game streams. Access. Access. <laughs> Let me ask, Let me ask you a question. Ask uh, yeah, for some ass. If, if you if you want to give us a bunch of money, you can just be our fourth member on the show. No one's taking us up on that so oh, far, but smart it's entirely people. possible. It's on the menu. Um, yeah, we got we got our wish list. If you um, go to my wish list or Pedro's wish list or Ven's wish list, you can end up on the fuck wall 3.0. Oh my god, is, is there a new one yet? Ooh. No, not, not yet. Um, still got to go to the office supply store. Something like that. <laughs> Something, something like that uh and you know as, as mentioned before we got a store um confuse confuse your friends confound your enemies buy them some lgc merch buy yourself some lgc merch hey, too because you deserve it it's nice it helps us pay all the bills and you are awesome but we do have a new patron we do carl carl <laughs> yeah he, he, he gave us a nice donation of baby hands and so mm-hmm. he gets a mention in this segment um, yes thank you carl <laughs> Also, to all the beautiful people on Twitch that are like, uh, I think we get bits and subs, yeah. right? Yeah, X Salty is gift sub and like there's no tomorrow. Yes. So we get subs. It's we like, get, like every single sentences? episode, he just gifts around some subs. So yeah. I mean, I, I think if you ask Twitch nicely, you can get some grinders. Yes. <laughs> Maybe a hoagie. Can we get like an open face sub? What would that be? What would you call an open face sub? Like you drop a that. Failure. Quit trying to give it to me. Um, yeah, fa- yeah, failure. Fail- a disgrace. A failure of <laughs> it's a pizza, isn't it? <laughs> I don't even know where to go. And, with and, that. And anyway, <laughs> <laughs> like the, like Nvidia pizza that's seven nanometers. Seven nanometers of surprise, baby. We would like to surprise everyone with seven nanometers. Yeah, no, no shit, Nvidia. Seriously, we we know it's coming. Um, this is WCF. Take with a grain of salt. Tech. NVIDIA will surprise everyone with a 7 nanometer GPU announcement. It's going to go down because, of course, they will. And they're like, we will always have something for you in the future, but we would like to surprise everyone with our overall roadmaps. And when things come out, there still continues improvement that we can do, both of the current node turns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. So. I Regulation. Mean, booga, booga. This, this is, is like, hmm, I, well, hmm. I have working theory, um, Dr. Svang. Uh, the sun shall rise yeah, tomorrow. Yes, Dr. Stone. Yes, yes. Oh, mm, mm, mm. We'll, we'll have to see. We'll have to verify We must this. speculate on this. However, I, I believe it will rise. Like, you know, dude, I mean, come on. Intel is going to be joining in the 7 nanometer parade when they get their discrete solution out in 2021, maybe Five, the end of 2020. Uh, but the thing is, man. I think with NVIDIA, you know, with Turing at 12 
nanometers, it's still crushing the F all mm -hmm. out of everything at the moment. So I don't think they're going to be pushing out that die shrink really until they have to, because, I mean, there are still people that, you know, the arguments can be made. You know, if you're not RTX on, brah, RTX on, sis, <laughs> like the 10 series, like that, that's still oh, a yeah. pretty good but card. My, my, my TI still crushes everything I throw at it. And yeah, like my, my main issue with this article is that it is pure speculation. They're like, oh yeah, we'd like to surprise people. It might be a seven nanometer announcement. It's very likely considering everything else. And to Ben, to your point, yes, it will come eventually. Mm -hmm. That no, no one, that is not in dispute. Um, nope. But wh whether or not uh, uh, it's going to occur doing like CES or uh, SIGGRAPH or whatever, where, where, when, whenever, whenever GTC. NVIDIA announces mm. GDC, whenever, whenever they announce this crap, uh, I don't know, mm. but it, it, it may be next year. It may not because like, like you said, tur like, uh, not Turing, uh, the previous one, uh, is still kicking substantial ass, right? Like, well, I, I don't, I don't think, I don't think, uh, NVIDIA. Yeah. Cause they're still making the money. There's not an answer to it. And I don't think we'll be seeing Hopper until man, we might see an announcement towards the end of the year, but I don't think we'll be seeing Silicon yeah, thinking. until like deep into 2020 because there's I no mean, need for it. if we're talking about yeah the high end they don't really have any competition unless amd pulls up <laughs> a, a, a ryzen on them and yeah i hope that 5900 uh and 5900 xt that they're um hinting at is actually something that's worth it i i AMD. want it, i want Come some on. of the tingo with the 2080 <laughs> and i don't want anyone to go why is there four eight pin power connectors? <laughs> <laughs> why, why does it require a small nuclear reactor? To, right. to Maybe not in? four, but three. <laughs> it, it's just got a one twenty outlet on it. Like, yeah. do, do, do they make a twenty four pin just an uh, extra ATX? Yeah. Didn't like all jokes aside. A, didn't in, not in, in Nvidia released a card that had a power connector on it at one point. Like, like a Molex? No, dude. This was like when everything was Molex. The power supplies didn't have those pins, and it had like a regular like barrel connector that you could plug oh, into. Oh, nice. I, yeah, this this I sounds legit. That. <laughs> this I, I, could it sounds, be it sounds like something NVIDIA would do in like early 2000s, <laughs> like late 90s. Yeah. Oh, man. That's not the only thing about NVIDIA we got to talk about. Oh boy. Yes. So this one is, uh, well, uh, there was a bit of news about NVIDIA maybe doing some uh, open source stuff. And, uh, well, this is the uh, up and coming talk for the GPU Technology Conference, GTC. And uh, who's it going to be? John Hubbard from uh, NVIDIA, uh, who is the principal software engineer there. Uh, he's going to be reporting on some, um, well, some open source Linux kernel and NVIDIA stuffs. What that will be, we'll have to wait and see. Um, GTC will be uh, 23 to 26 uh, March 2020. Mm -hmm. So it's still a bit of a ways out. Well, it's a session. We'll they see. say the primary talk is going to be focused on <laughs> stupid computing. And yep. <laughs> I think this is all going to be compute. I mean, maybe we're going to see some more open sourciness with like CUDA and stuff like that. I don't think we're going to be seeing um, an AMD equivalent of open sourcing that driver again because they don't got to. No, yeah, they, they really don't. And, you know, AMD just, they have at this point, they have everything, at least on Linux, to kick NVIDIA's butt when it comes to open source graphics. Uh, all they needed to do actually is just open source the um, the last bits or the last blobs that they have in the kernel, and that it be it. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure that the fine folks at Mesa, and if we're being honest, at Intel, uh, they would be all over that the moment it came out. Uh, but this, going back to Nvidia, this isn't the first time that they've done something like this. Uh, when uh, Pascal came out, uh, they released the header files for. Maxwell, because they needed um, the drivers in the Linux kernel to be good enough that they could run it just, you know, to run Android, basically. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't be surprised if this was the case. Probably not for Android, but maybe for something else. Or I, I, Jordan, yeah. I want to ask you this question then, man, because I'm really curious as, you know, I'm an NVIDIA shill uh, that has a thread wrapper. Um, mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Team Blue. Let's confuse everyone. Uh, what is it? Because this is the big thing. I always see trotted up. I was like, I will never use an NVIDIA product because open source drivers typed on my Windows 10 machine. Um, <laughs> what are those people going to do if like, NVIDIA genuinely surprises everyone and releases their equivalent? Like, here's our current Turing stack, bitches. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I don't think that's going to happen. Me, but... me either, but... Let's... Uh, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Maybe... Fan, fan fiction. Um, I, th I think from out of the sea, like a, a clamshell will emerge, open up, and like a naked gen son will be there. Be like, clam... I have your source code. Wait a minute. Let me give it to you. He's naked, but kisses. wearing a leather jacket. I, oh, I yeah, need yeah, a yes or no. It's, see, I, I'm envisioning the clam wearing a leather jacket. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the clam is made out of leather. How does a clam uh, well, so, wear so a leather so jacket? The... Listen, it's so in the bondage. <laughs> clam bondage I, I mean so here, here's the thing about this this is just a summary for a talk that is yet to happen right like when they say yes. a few future plans regarding our convert contributions to the linux kernel supporting new vote they could that could literally just mean our up to the minute decision is we're just not gonna do it mm -hmm. fuck all y'all mm -hmm. peace out mic drop um I, I i think though i think someone um, throws a linus at them from the audience right <laughs> I, I, though more more realistically though i think this uh this is more going to be about like um are like en enterprise grade arm stuff because that that has that's starting to get a lot more server penetration and there's going to be a lot more like gpu compute and co-processing which would require at least some sort of open source sh uh, shim like nouveau in order to at least get the blob drivers running because yeah. otherwise like, yeah. the socs would just straight up bork um maybe maybe they're going to be like releasing oh yeah we have a schedule for like releasing some of the sign firmware for like the four series cards so that a uh, nouveau can like more effectively support that stuff Maybe it's going to be, hey, we're we're going to start uh, we're going to start trying to bring our driver more in line with the standard uh, Linux drivers. Who knows? It's pure speculation at this point, and for all we know, it just could be nothing. Maybe they'll come up and be and like, hey, we're going to make it work with real time kernels. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I mean you, you no. keep writing that fan. <laughs> hey man, I, I would I, I, very, I, I would see them like actually open sourcing the ray tracing bits and trying to get Nuvo to support the ray tracing bits. Because you know, compute uh, before no, they uh, ever actually. <laughs> no, they're. they're I, I, I'm, I'm real time sure. compatibility. They're they're gonna, they're gonna try and lock in ray tracing as best they can. It's just gonna be like CUDA all over again. I don't know, man. I mean, CUDA's CUDA one, but then you see things like G-Sync, man. G that that G-Sync's genuinely just Nvidia's like fine. <laughs> it's like all right, you win. Mm -hmm. It's pointless now. Yeah, because hey. no one wants to spend a thousand dollars on a monitor with variable refresh rate. Well, <laughs> on a 1080p monitor, mm -hmm. <laughs> a 24 inch curved, because you know Ooh, reasons. That, man. Mm, that curve. Hey, baby. Uh, boarding we'll game curve. controllers to where with what? So, um, someone someone put together a little Python uh, project called Input Over SSH, um, and it allows you to stream uh, joystick. Jo uh, joystick uh, device joystick. calls over joystick. It's mm -hmm. very strict. Joystick device calls over SSH, and the intention is, oh, you can maybe use this to roll your own sort of Steam Play thing. Uh, if you don't want to, if you don't feel like going through that workaround that we talked about a few weeks ago for getting non-Steam games working through Steam Remote Play. Um, yep. In this case, though, you'll still need something to handle the display. Maybe if you haven't discovered Jitsi technology and virtual cams, we you should you should stick around. Maybe <laughs> click on a couple other videos in this YouTube channel mm -hmm. because there's there's a lot of content on how to do just that minus this component which you now have um but yeah it's a neat little project to get some network multiplayer stuff working for games that don't usually support it mm. which could be useful for like arcade cabinets or who knows what right like it's a handy little yep. project this definitely falls square in the category of like i could probably find you it's a brilliant project like that because somebody's like let me see if i can find something to do with this oh absolutely yeah and it, maybe, maybe, in the article, they specifically it. say it's like uh, in combination with VS, uh, the VNC server client setup, this could be used as an open source alternative to Steam Remote Play. But, Gaming over VNC? Ugh. Yeah, baby. Yeah. No. <laughs> Honestly, I'm setting this up on like a TV box and then using it to play games without having to worry about plugging in your controller or pairing it with whatever is running the TV box, uh, I think that could work. I think that could work very well. And it'll keep latency down to a minimum because it's inside the same network. 
I mean, you probably want to use arc four compression in that case, because I think maybe default this stage, uh, not compression, encryption is maybe a little too expensive for something like uh, game input, but you know. yeah, but that is the point here. <laughs> SSH, even when you're slinging it, it kind of tops out around 240 megabytes a second anyway. So mm. ask me, I uh, know, uh, QDOT quake. Yeah. So th th this is kind of interesting. This is a uh, project. Um, more more like apply am i right Come it's basically apply. a way to uh import quick map files into uh godot the idea behind this according to their readme is that um there's a lot of really good open source level editing technology um there's a lot of good level editing ed level editing technology period but it usually requires quite a bit of specialized knowledge you need to be like a level designer you need to understand how these level design tools work Conversely, Quake maps are pretty easy to get up and running. God so damn, don't I love seeing thesis in a thesis, GitHub. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Bring it. Um, but yeah, the the idea is like Quake, Quake maps are a nice little in between. They're programmer friendly enough that programmers can put them together, uh, and this is just a way to import them into your Godot project, um, so that you can have a little more easier tooling as a developer. So that's that's kind of nice. It's 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 nice that Godot is getting more support for other types of map formats, making it just a better open source engine altogether. Mm. Yep. And, you know, since we've been covering the uh, process of uh, the Daggerfall re-implementation in Unity, I wouldn't be opposed to playing Quake 1 or Quake 2 if it was re-implemented in Godot. Mm -hmm. I think that, that that would be kind of interesting to see. <laughs> I think it would be very, uh, I, I'm just having like horrible, like traumatizing flashbacks, learning how to build, um, quake levels is going from like doom Two, using the overhead map and you really couldn't do much with it and having to learn how to carve stuff out with a quake editor. <laughs> that hurt my little reptilian brain, man. As someone who built a lot of, uh, a lot of modules and areas for modules and, uh, never winter nights, mm -hmm. the Aurora, um, tool set was freaking amazing seriously beam doc bring that one to Linux, please right <laughs> on so have you ever wanted to use something faster than x composite with obs sure why not oh well you're in luck not really but uh you can try to play with this man uh the nvidia's got a thing called nvfpc uh this is available on GeForce cards. You probably never heard of it. But the theory here is to gain a few percentage points in performance over X composite. And, you know, NVFP is definitely a thing. They've even brought up, you know, like OBS developers like, hey, can you like do this officially? And they're like, no, we're not going to officially support it. To which, you know, you might rightfully say, but why? I'm like, well, there's a reason you probably never heard of it. And that rhymes with Quadro, son. <laughs> It's only in, uh, enabled on Quadro cards, which like womp womp. But the walking through this thread on Reddit, the guy was like, hey, man, I stumbled across this project that allows you to unlock because artificial limitations with NVN code is you're limited to two streams on consumer cards. If mm -hmm. you have NVN code enabled, that's not what it gets. They can do up to four. Easy peasy. No problem. So there's a thing on GitHub that you can get to. This will be linked in the show notes with thing Oaks, which I tested out and was like, hey man, you can, you know, just a little hack to the driver and then you can just, you know, do all four with it. And he's like, could you add using your same hackery magic, the support for NVFP? And the guy was like, yeah, like 30 minutes later. Same like, day. Try this. <laughs> that did work. So, um, if you want to go through the trouble, uh, doing that, which, I mean, it took me a minute and it didn't work with like OBS that I'd currently built. So I had to build it off the head. And th there's a lot of hoops to jump through for a big womp womp because it just like locked up OBS. Cause I got the plugin and got the plugin installed with OBS and after patching the drivers and I just, the way it works is it doesn't capture a window. It captures a display. It's like, which display port would you like me to yoink? And I was like, mm, this one. And I was like, no, it's like, yeah. I didn't care enough at that point because negligible performance, but it's the closest you'll ever get to something like shadow play on Linux yeah. to answer your question. And if you're wondering, yeah, and you do actually get to touch this because NVIDIA will let certain programs run that on consumer cards. You might not know, but things like Steam Remote Play take advantage of it. 
and steam and, podcasting and, and that is because and the... valve made with the duke hots mm. and paid yeah. for, that, for, <laughs> for that privilege so yeah, because NVFBC is the thing that Shadowplay uses uh, on Windows, and that's what a lot of people use to like capture games without mm-hmm. even have to worry. They just don't have to worry Minimum about it. Overhead. They just hit. Right. Yeah, they just hit the button, and it captures like the last ten seconds of what they played if they're just looking to get like a clip, or they can record their whole um, gaming session. And yeah, that it. That's one of the things that the Nvidia driver was missing on linux anyway and apparently now we know why because it was locked behind quadro you had to pay I'm the quadro sure tax still, i'm pretty sure it's actually in the driver just like the shim doesn't expose it or like has a yeah limitation. yeah it's only exposed to quadro yeah it, period yeah, it, it's it, the it, same quadro, stupid limitation that doesn't let anything else be used uh if you're trying to like pass through your gpu to a virtual machine yeah, yeah. it's mm-hmm. like plugging in a fifth monitor <laughs> yeah indeed <laughs> Well, right. you know what? Yuzu's not Re- just for drinking anymore. Yeah, gamers rejoice. You don't need an you don't need an Nvidia card anymore if you want to play on the Switch emulator. They the Yuzu the Switch emulator now has a Vulcan release. Um, and you might be thinking, well, so the so the emulator for the console primarily featuring Vulcan or NVK or whatever based apps was done in OpenGL. NVM. Well, it turned well what, whatever the fuck it is. Is that Nvidia a shirtless <laughs> link? Content. That is a yes. shirtless link. <laughs> what? Um, yeah. The, you, that's how you start off Breath of the Wild. Um, no sure. Naughty. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, but as it turns out, a lot more uh, Switch games are done via OpenGL than you might think. And there's a lot of, they go into why this is. There's a lot of like hardware, hardware accelerated stuff uh, in NVIDIA GPUs that allow less than optimal OpenGL code to run very, very, very fast. Um, but anyways, um, the, the, main, the main reason why this is being implemented in Vulkan now is because... OpenGL on AMD for Windows kind of sucks and always has because <laughs> AMD is not very good at writing OpenGL drivers, so much so that the good OpenGL drivers on Linux are not primarily written by LGC AMD. LGC looks forward to your hate mail, as you were. Indeed. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so now now, uh, now that they have a Vulkan render, it's there's still a lot of work to be done. They're saying that they're still running into some issues, and there's still some weird stuff that happens because uh, the Vulkan implementation that it they're working on is also working not on the... I Intel, GPUs yep. on Intel, yeah. Indeed. Nice. Um, it's now working uh, on the Intel I GPUs, dude, yeah. which that, it wasn't. <laughs> that triangle looks sex, son. Sexy oh. triangle, Ben. So sexy. <laughs> um, but yeah, now now uh, now that uh, Vulkan is being supported, uh, you can play Switch emulator using an AMD or an Intel GPU. Previously, you needed the fact that uh, the NVIDIA GPUs have a ton of hardware acceleration for the stuff to even get games that are remotely playable. Hmm. So. It's 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 thing now. Uh, it's going to be improving over time. I don't think it's going to be as extreme as like RPCSX three when they're like or um or Dolphin where they're like, yeah, we just re-implemented the entire uh, Wii GPU in Vulcan because it was easier. One of the but, reasons yep. I always like throwing out when people are like, do you think DX VK and Wine and all that is ever going to be like one to one ratio? I point to game emulators. I'm like, these things are emulating hardware and hitting native performance so yes i do and you have games that currently uh if you compare them to the current version of windows 10 they work better on linux with actual you know higher fps and they just work better yes but you have to have an iq above (laughs) that of warm soda in order to run (laughs) linux so that knocks out a lot of windows users yeah. You, know, you also need to run your. You also need to run the ACO Mesa compiler, which that that in and of itself is a barrier for entry for a lot of people, Meh. unless you're on Arch. Unless you're, you're on Ubuntu Mesa. and you just load up the Valve PPA, it's really easy actually. Yeah. Or, or, uh, but, or the no, Arch I, or the uh, Valve AUR for Arch. Yeah. Uh, uh, going back to Yuzu, uh, I am very glad that they're using Vulkan, but uh, I read through the article. It's like okay, so uh, the switch shaders. The, those seem to be like the key, and uh, apparently uh, the developer Rodrigo um, did a very good job of uh, getting Spur V to interpret those shaders and basically getting those to work very, very well, not just with the NVIDIA cards like they had in the past, but with the um, AMDs and the Intels. So if Spur V was the key, wouldn't OpenGL 4.6 have been the next logical step. I mean, they already had a working OpenGL stack. Wouldn't just 
have 4.6 support be Pedro, better. Pedro, why do you hate Vulcan? No, I don't. That's the thing. I'm actually super stoked that the Vulcan bits are there, and uh, uh, all uh, of like, the like, emulators like, should be ha- using Vulcan, at least the, the ones that you know support it, 3D it, it games. Ha- it has to do. It has to do with Windows, right? Like it's, it says so in the article. The only reason that they're considering Vulcan is because oh, the, the, the drivers the on Windows, performance yeah. under Windows is terrible. That that yeah, that is yeah, quite literally yeah. it. So thank <laughs> you, AMD, 12. for being terrible at writing drivers. <laughs> You're making it so that more people are using Vulcan. I hear it works great on a phone. Um, yeah. AMD, speaking of, baby. Oh, yeah. Yes. So, uh, well, it, it's not just AMD. It's uh, ASRock, EEPD, OnLogic, and simply Nook uh, that have decided to pick up on the uh, embedded Ryzen processors. That looks like and, a Nook. Uh, yeah, it, it, it does look like no, an Nook, no. and um, there's a bunch of uh, iterations of them that are using, instead of the Intel uh, CPUs, they're using the embedded versions like the R1000 and the V1000, and if that sounds familiar, that's because that's the same one that's running on the Smach, at least the prototype that they turn out to people, mm. and... Um, Major kudos to uh, Sebastian Peake from uh, PC Per because he actually did some extra digging and actually went through all the websites and uh, compiled a little table with uh, all of the modules uh, that are available for the Ryzen embedded uh, V1000s and R1000 series. And you have your typical dual core four thread uh, Ryzen APU with the Vega 3 all the way up to the four core eight thread uh, with a Vega 11, very similar to the 2400 G and the 3400 G. And that's very nice to see. Although this, uh, these um, lines of uh, devices, they seem to be very clearly targeted at like industrial NUC type systems. But I know a lot of people Linux users who would very would be very very happy if uh, these particular SKUs were available for the general consumer market. I which, some, which some of them are. I like the uh, idea of a Nook. I do. It's yep. kind of brilliant. I planned uh, initially to like build Nooks for uh, your two boxes for the Dells until I got around to something that when, it, when I see a Nook now, I, I think uh, three things: tiny, hot, and expensive. Updated that. I don't want to go back. Um, you can get a lot more PC. I don't. I just don't get it. Hundred percent factor. Yeah, that's. Yeah. I. I don't get why you would want. You're cool, bro. You're cool, sis. I don't have a problem with it. But it's like, why do you want something that's tiny, hot, and expensive? You. That's going to be a thermal pain in the ass to deal with, and it's still not going to be as fast as like some like an itsy bitsy tower. To yeah, tape I, or to I, I screw mean, to the face amounts on the back of a TV. Bitch, give me and enough I, duct tape and I'll put anything on the back of a TV. <laughs> Listen, man, we we don't go bringing duct tape into this. Oh, but yeah, shit. like, um, so so two two things. Um, the Kit Guru article, the links to all this is in our show notes that originally um, brought our attention to this, uses the term open source quite a bit. And yeah, AM, unless AMD's like releasing those Zen 2 schematics. Uh, it's not open source. Although, I mean, they might as well, right? Like, it's mm. not like anyone can fabricate them these days anyways. Um, but, uh, going back to what Ven was saying about, uh, pricing, I mean, from a, from a cost perspective, I did a little research and it ranges from about like 400 to six mm-hmm. to about $900, which is about on par so with like the Nook Intel pricing. Offering. Yeah. It's, yeah. No, it's <laughs> Nook pricing. So it's, I, I did so the same it's, thing. It's really, it's like, really oh, is this going to be reasonably pro? Nope. Yeah. It, 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 it's, it's whether you're a team red or team blue. Is basically what it boils down to. Mm. But yeah, I mean, I, I, I see the advantage of like small form factor PCs, especially in like space constrained industrial environments, for sure. Um, they're also, also there's like fewer moving parts. I guess it's one of those things where like if something breaks down, you chuck it and you plug in a new one. But um, yeah, a lot um, these these things are saying their market segment is going to be like embedded industrial systems and media boxes. I can definitely see media boxes. This would make an OK yes. Steam box, but. Uh, yes. When I think media box, <laughs> I my first thought's like storage. Well, yes, the, and that, that's why my media box is my server with an RX 580 plugged into it. So. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. Uh, we're going to bounce out of here. Coming up next, we got Octopal Double Dragon Squared. Throwing chairs at it. Flashback to your Amiga bidets, because goddamn...
Welcome back to the Chairquisition, where the accused must survive trial by Fedora. Neon and Dibian. Fyodora. Wow. Fyodora, man. It's like the Amazon Fedora. It's a venereal disease of Linux. <laughs> Listen, if, if you have a burning sensation when you install your Linux distro, you're doing it right. Yeah, but um, Then, and only then, can the question be asked. Is it fun? This week, we're taking a look at eight dragons, or quadruple double dragon, or whatever you want to call it. It's developed by Extended Octo Mode. Dragon. In, in Unity. <laughs> Cubic the, dragon, yeah. <laughs> dragon cubed, where dragon equals two. Uh, you can pick it up for about ten bucks. What is it? Can you and seven of your friends? I don't have seven friends. Defeat the criminal <laughs> gangs of the city and stop Mister Big. Prove your skills in eight dragons. An old school scrolling beat 'em up, yep, straight baby. out of the eighties. Uh, the devs did send us some keys, so thank you for that. Let's get started. How did this thing run on Debian? Mm. It Learn how to do that. Um, <laughs> you would think I would have figured it out by now. Uh, Debian 10.2. Check it out on the Threadripper 1920X, 32 gigajoules of RAM. Hope I can power through this juggernaut. Um, 2060. Runs fine. I mean, it really does. Out of the box, did have an issue with it. Launched full screen. Boom, played it. 60 is going to 60. No problems with performance. Graphics. Didn't see any glitches. This hipster pixel. Well, ish. More than the fun section. However, I'm going to dig it a chair because I couldn't get the fuck mothering thing to reliably work in any type of windowed mode. It was like, best I can do is like full screen windowed. And I was like, can you change that? It told me to die in a fire. Very interesting. Controls, X clone, Steam controller, dual shock. Gave it the Spock. 100% on that. No problems. Out of the box. But yeah, man, windowed mode. That's the thing. We're coming up in 2020. The fuck? And it's Unity too. Seriously? Yeah, on uh, Fedora 30 64 bit with the i7-6700K with hyper threading on and the mitigations off and the GTX 1080 Ti, it does in fact launch when you mm. click play. It's impressive, especially in 2019, almost 2020. Um, <laughs> performance at 1080p, yeah, it's like fucking pull on pixel power. If this thing runs like shit, but that's because there's a slider for how fast this thing needs to run. <laughs> we'll get to that later. Uh, graphics. On a 28-inch UHD display, you can see the pixels making up the fake pixels making up the fake pixels. And it's a little surreal. So I turned that retro filter off with a quickness. Uh, controls. Yeah, pr pushing buttons does things sometimes. Um, playing this. I'm reminded uh, of just like spending time at Strider's house at about 4 o'clock in the morning playing Final Fight on an Amiga emulator. But again, we'll get to that in the fun section. At least technically it works. Four chairs. Yeah. And over here uh, in KDE Neon Land, it, um, with the Ryzen 3700X and the GTX 1080, it launches just fine, no problems whatsoever. Performance at, uh, well, at 1440p, I get 144 FERPs. Because, yeah, it's Unity. It actually uh, sees what the... Um, refresh rate of your monitor is and it just puts it at that the graphics yeah thank the flying spaghetti monster that they actually give you a chance to disable that filter because i genuinely thought the game was running at 640 by 480 it's like eh. yeah. <laughs> it's because it is <laughs> yeah no it does it not look 43 good. inches cupcake <laughs> no. yeah uh the controls yeah the dual shock 4 were just fine out of the box but they did one thing where they had uh, cross as attack and square uh, as jump. Mm -hmm. And that kind of did a number yep. on my brain. It's like, no, 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 that's that's wrong. <laughs> that's that's wrong. Well, if, yeah, if, but uh, what, what's, what's you funny go is in, if you change it, it changes what the confirm button is. So it changes yes, the confirm Yes, it does. But that's okay. I can... I can deal I can deal with the confirm button being square. It's fine. That's okay. It's in game, me pressing the cross and the character not jumping. That's the problem. But hey, they give you a chance to change Boom. that. So oh, it's you all ducked good. it, you dick. Oh four chairs. Yeah. <laughs> That's Big. how I beat it. <laughs> That's how I beat it. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, there you go. It works. Kind of just don't run it in a window. Or expect it to run well. Um yeah, pretty much. Did you have fun with it, Ven? Fun's a subjective word, correct? Let's blow this thing up. Double dragon, ladies and gentlemen. This is not, not by a far damn sight. I played the hell out of Double Dragon in the arcades growing up. I could reliably solo my way through that fucker for under five pounds, which a little pricey, but as a kid, come on, man, you gotta do something with the allowance. This is closer to like Target Renegade on a budget, with the added benefit of a nigh impossible single player campaign now the game is listed as single player but unless i'm missing something i honestly don't believe for a minute 
that you can finish this in that mode. I just, I just don't see it. It's not there. I know I'm old, I'm decrepit, but this is the next level of fuck you hard. Uh, as for the gameplay, in that single player, the mob management is pretty fucking useless since the baddies just do a mirror and smash on your ass. Uh, it's something I had to come back and I checked that out when I get back to the house today. I was like, yeah, this is all it's doing. You would really benefit by, I don't know, having at least two players. You can punch and drop the kicks when you're not busy getting killed to death. Uh, the controls, uh, really nothing to complain about there. They're a bit of all right. I didn't have any issues navigating my way into the enemy's fist. Graphically, it is kind of a mixture of legitimate pixel art, but there's a helping heap of tap that pixel button in Photoshop fam in here. I mean, there's like, ain't nobody believing, especially when you take off the Vaseline filter. Like, hey man, some things are like real pixel art. The other, some other shit's just like, here's a regular picture, pixel filter. Um, it's not exactly what I would call cohesive as an art style. And, you know, if we're being honest, man, that smear, I mean, retro filter does little to cover that up. Positives. Beep boop soundtrack. It's okay if you're into that. Didn't have a problem with those. Like, that's well done. I could jam out to that a little bit. Uh, but I want to say at the end of the day, man, I mean, it's priced well enough for a party game. It's like 11 quid. It's not too bad. For a single player game, man, I really struggled to get 45 minutes into that. I got, I, I, I noped out. I noped out at the part, if you were watching the video version, I got all the way to the part where Pedro was, where that pimp shot my punk ass. I was like, fuck this. Guy. Just. <laughs> <laughs> one shot because you gotta grind even to get to the end of that second level then just like boom like nope uh-uh Rawr. i i was unhappy <laughs> so yeah you might have guessed it for the fun nope yeah, uh, playing Final Fight on an Amiga emulator isn't fun for me, and I didn't really grow up playing these sorts of beat em up, so I don't really have any real nostalgia for this sort of thing. Um, more, I, I was playing more like the Power Rangers on the on the uh, Sega Genesis. That was a fun beat. Or was it Genesis? They're, they're, the one Dude, on. You bring up the. Do you know what this made me really want? Was what, uh, what was it? Uh, Streets of Rage? Yeah. Or, yeah. Uh, Let's get or like River City that. Ransom or something like that. Yeah. Mm. Um, there, there, there are certainly brawlers from that era, I think that do a better job than this. And I mean, some, some of the issues can be fixed by cranking the game speed up to fastest so that it plays like a standard brawler, but it's still pretty bad. And I mean, yeah, like Ven said, normally what happens is you get flanked and then you just get knocked down at infinitum forever and ever and ever. And then you just lose all your lives. And then you say, fuck this game. Um, I don't know. Maybe maybe having a bunch of people here uh, would actually help quite a bit. Uh, you know, this is supposed to be for eight players, so may maybe like the game was sort of optimized for that level, that sort of playstyle where you have four to eight people in. And I'm actually curious to like see how Steam Remote Play would handle four to eight people. Probably be pretty janky if you if the person hosting doesn't have a very good internet connection. But then again, for this game, given the fact that the this entire video was what, like 300 megs uncompressed. Yep. I, th I think it might actually be doable. Um, yeah, but in forever alone mode, this is not fun at all. I'm not a fan of it. I'm going to give it one chair. Yeah. Speaking of fan I am of uh, Yahtzee Croshaw, there is one thing that I don't agree with him on. Uh, he's always said that uh, a game needs to be able to stand on its own single player campaign. And while I do hate people and I can see the point that he's making in that respect, I don't agree. I absolutely see the point in a game in which its sole focus is the multiplayer experience. In the not too distant past, I would have given uh, Eight Dragons a very poor score for being a local only multiplayer game because where the hell are you going to find seven other people to come and join you to play that game? I don't think um, I can fit seven people in my house. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but, you know, with Steam's remote play together, I can absolutely s give this game a tentative check it out. Uh, it's uh, the focus is very much on having a bunch of people in meet space or on voice and allowing the mayhem to unfold. It's hard, especially playing in forever alone mode, but it's not completely obtuse. Uh, yes, like Ven said, the characters tend to mirror exactly where you're going up and down, so they're always on the same plane as you. 
but I guess that is to be expected if you're dealing with this particular level of 3D, mm. as in not 3D at all. Um, I did actually very much enjoy the background music. That was uh, that was surprisingly not what the hell terrible. do you have against bar stools? Jeez, <laughs> they have coins in them, <laughs> and sometimes but, hammers. Yeah, uh, Yes, uh, and this is definitely a game that deserves a multiplayer stream, or three, at some point. So yeah, I give it two chairs. Mm. Uh, what, one, one thing I want to bring up before we get out of here, I noticed that Pedro was playing uh, Zonda, or whatever her, her name was. I picked that character too. Who did, what did, what did, who'd you pick, Ven? Uh, Bruce Willis. I mean, not Bruce, Bruce Willis. Willis. <laughs> not I, I, Bruce Willis, I, I, I actually, yes. I actually tried to add a couple Willis of characters. Brillis. <laughs> Brillis. Yeah. I like Brillis. her because uh, of the uh, kick. Flip. There seems to be yeah. a long enough hitbox on that kick that it hits a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, there, there, there was quite a bit of like, I got through a couple levels just because I was spamming that. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that. All right. Well, that's there, one of the things I'm kind of balanced on with that is you could probably find a way to cheese your way through. I looked on the internet and the internet's like, there is no video of somebody beating this in single player, man. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I want to see like SGDQ like single player speed run of this. Well, I, was, like, I went to check their Steam form, and there's a question. Uh, I was like, so I'd like to know: is there a single developer who has beat this game in single player? Mode? It remains unanswered. <laughs> <laughs> Make it that what you will. Indeed. All right. So there, there you go. It's it's all right. Maybe if you have some friends, this wow, game will wow. be fun. If not, then it's probably not. Coming up next, we got the chonkiest hate mail section we've had in a while, featuring. Not one, but two modes of communication. Scary. Well, it's the end of the show. And if you'd like to uh, spoil it for yourself, I hope end. you click to, uh, you know, just scroll to the end of the thing and just click right here. If you here click and... to scroll to the end of the thing. Yes. That's going to be a new <laughs> shirt in our merch store, man. <laughs> click, to, click to scroll. Yeah. Thanks, thanks suggest Oh, that. man. If you're that's, going that's, to that's start terrible. taking... The random crap I, don't I visually say represent been... an aneurysm. <laughs> if you're by, going by to start the taking uh, the dumb the things the I scroll. say yeah. after I'm boozed up all the way, you're going to have a lot of material for shirts. But hey, maybe you have some material for our t-shirts and you'd like to let us know. Go on over to LinuxGameCast.com, hit the contact button, and uh, throw in your hate mail. Just make sure LGC Weekly is the show you're sending it to. And the rest of the form is pretty self-explanatory. If you're a game developer, Apparently you'd like us to have a look not. at your game. <laughs> <laughs> Just look at that. Yes, if, if, if you're a game developer and you'd like us to have a look at your game, first, yeah, don't, you know, copy uh, your thing that has like shit tons of links that's just going to end in the uh, spam queue and you don't want that we don't want that so don't do it uh, and if you'd like to send us some keys we'd be very happy to have them just make sure you include three it, that's, 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 it. Many. that's three of us right yeah that three of us so yeah oh, you, do you, that you do, you do the german three i never realized that yeah three what I, I, the only reason i know about that is because of inglorious bastards <laughs> oh all right, fine. Quit judging me and my fingers. Uh, coming up first. Uh, up first, we got uh, some feedback for uh, Pedro uh, for regarding the Open Morrowind stream. He's saying, getting caught up on the series finally and doing a playthrough myself. It's been years. I originally played on the Xbox, you heathen, years ago. I also appreciate the commentary. Thanks from Jim. Thank you. James, very, very much appreciated. Uh, yeah, the empty also mentioned in Discord is like, oh, that that's actually a nice playthrough you're doing there. It's like, yeah, all right, that helps a little bit. I mean, if you just my want ego some appreciates it. PMS or um, <laughs> <laughs> you could do worse. Uh, Pedro sensory. Meridian what's the response. MR sense for? Murder. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> Burner, you know what? Next, next, next hate mail. Dude, next I, no, no, man. Uh, I, I check him out, man. I always like pop in because people who dig that dig that. You know, it's like the moral win. I couldn't get into Elder Scrolls up until Scrim job, and so right on. Irritant. 
Ertain and uh, is talking about, uh, well, the Steam cleaning uh, we talked about last week. Hundreds of games were taken off Steam because some of the publishers involved may have been laundering money. So they were laundering via Steam and Valve did a Steam cleaning. Jeez, the jokes practically write themselves. I don't guess. Yes. <laughs> hey, what are you talking he about? does. I don't understand. I, no, I, I, I don't get it. Explain it to me. Oh, oh, here, let me explain it to you. That's literally the title that I had in the show notes that are available on steamcast.com uh, for that story. It was called Steam Cleaning. Okay. Yeah. God, where's it at? It's not real. Um, oh. No one reads the show notes, Ven. Come on. Stand. Yeah, they do, man. I see the fucking Bitly click throughs on that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah they fucking do uh this comes from twitter i wanted to throw this in here because hey man look shameless self-promotion apparently spootify claims i like linux podcast and at vinstone because again this turned out to be like our show twitter is my personal twitter that was fun <laughs> um talking about your top podcast from the uh spootify we're number one that's right uh, head of Linux on well, blog. on stands list self. anyway. Shut <laughs> up. Let me have my dream. <laughs> Ubuntu podcast and the London show. That's cool. Um, I didn't get a... I might have. It might be in my spam folder. Do you use Spotify, Jordan? No. I, no. I, I just have my stuff. Do you know what a uh, podcast is? It's like I, 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 when, when, when you cast like a seed pod into mm -hmm. the wind and like watch it fly. Yes. Pretty much like that. Yeah. <laughs> Except the wind is the internet and it smells like shit. But the awesome. wind is see that needs to be on like uh like a motivational poster. The wind is the internet. And the wind is shit. shit. It's out to get you. Murder no, I, wind. I, 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 I don't I don't usually use Spotify. I actually primarily use like Google Play Music if I need to stream music. Would you go see a movie it was called Murder Wind? Wind? <laughs> I did. I did. It's called the happening. Ah, shit. <laughs> yes, yes, it is. <laughs> Last but not least, Ariton. Not to be confused Again. with Ariton One. <laughs> Drop this on our Patreon, so we had to throw it in. Fuck 3.0. Um, for the fuck wall 3.0, you guys should go all out. I'm talking a nice monitor hooked up to a Raspberry Pi, which scrolls the names of the contributors and maybe has a rainbow effect. Period. I think I think what you should do is like scrawl it into the wall with a toothbrush. <laughs> then we could just turn oh, your camera to the side. Style. Yeah, right. I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fuck Will 3.0 is uh, the, the possibilities are endless. I think I've pretty much ruled out like scrolling LED thing up here because I'd have mm -hmm. to drop that. Also, all right. I'll throw the like danger thing out, man. If you can find like a, I think it was what was it in Freedom Units? Forty inches it has to be like forty inches by like eight ish. Uh that works with Linux. Oh, so the um, all the letter, software to program uh, them is like requires Windows. Hmm. <laughs> Everyone I found right. on fucking Amazon did. I was like, oh, I'll just pick one of these up because they're like hundred bucks. But nah. <laughs> Oh, you know, you know, you know, we 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 could get extra fancy and just like make it a piece of green Bristol board and chroma key it out. Mm. I don't know. I, I like the idea of like the yeah. scrolling programmable <laughs> thing. We'll we'll see. I mean, but, yeah. just, just because the entire so galaxy of possibilities. We, we could effectively have like, f you know, fuck wall three forever and just have everybody in there. Fuck, fuck wall three for all. Fuck wall beyond. <laughs> fuck for all. Well, yeah, we, no, that's what we need to do. We need to get Kevin Smith in here to just hold up a sign. That's right. You probably do it. Yeah. Hold a fat man. <laughs> hold a fat man. Fat man. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> where do you get those marvelous toys? I, I don't even know where to. It, to mm. <laughs> On that bombshell. <laughs> I guess the toys are gone. <laughs> Let's cue the music. You can always find us around uh, 8.30 Eastern Standard Moon Time. Ask Google when that is. It'll tell you. Or you can just check the schedule at linuxteamcast.com. If you're a Patreon, hop in an hour earlier into Discord, where we light up the audio channels and sometimes a video. Come say hi and participate in the pre pre super shows, and it's awesome. Thanks for being there. If you want to get in touch with me, at Vin Stone. Um, that's also our show thing. Also, if you'd like a direct line of communication to me, 
This might be confusing, but using our fucking contact form is a direct line to me, and I will actually see it. <laughs> you will not end up in spam four weeks later going, I really tried to contact you. And it's like, okay, cool story, bro. I'm Drone Spunk. If you want to know who I am, you can Google me, and you'll just find me. But if you want to know who I really am, you should follow me on Twitter. Is it That's still a picture cool. of you pointing at the top? It's not, isn't it a picture of you? Or is that the other way around? Oh. Uh-huh. Yeah. I am Ben Stone. You can find me at the Burning Pool on Twitter. <laughs> or at Jordan Swung on our Mastodon. Or at Frojo. Yeah. But whatever. That thing I don't. Things. Fuck it. Yeah. And depending on which country you are, if you Google for Pedro Mateos, you might find me or my Twitter account. Anyway, it's easier to just go to at unaccounted4 on Twitter. Because that's where I am. That's literally the last of the social medias that I got going on. Aww. So, Aww. yeah. Aww. <laughs> Aww. If Twitter goes, I'm gone. <laughs> no, you got to do the new thing from the Wikipedia thing. I, so, some, I don't even you, remember you, the you URL. Can, you can follow oh, Pedro yeah. on TikTok. At TikTok. Pedro. Pl- pl- the V Social or whatever Something it's called. Something like that. Yeah. We're going to some credits from last week. How about that? <laughs> yeah. That'll teach you. Sorry, Carl. Hey, man. You're not in them. <laughs> don't 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 worry. Your meat dragon will be thought of. Fondly. Carl get his own animated gift during the show. I think we're good. Yes, we're yes, good, he Carl. did. You'll be the greatest next week, man. Carl, we gotta thank our theorem, oh! Mr. Fox Dog, and Empty, and the Atomic Ass, and Michael G, and Bob Ramp, Aldius, Haplo, Mackie, Scoot, and, and we, the got, we got those regular ass producers who are still full ass ass like steven they bring so, the maximum ass man Ma- oh you have steve ass, you have steve and you have yeah, jill and Spaltar, steve nubbin luke w matt c zoe <laughs> Nicole, dirty Frazo, D, mr amish Winterfell, adrian james Diggerl, no again. Cast, now we got and, Nova. and carl <laughs> Oh, we still don't have Don Frank? M yet. With Mike G, it's, it's, Maddie, it's, it's, Linux that, Nero, Truggy, Aldius, Arthur, and Bradley, Jill, and Steve. Steve, Frank, why, why, why are you trying to Luke catch me with your Nathan, old photos? W, Era 20, John M, Mr. Red, Floyka, the Admiral JT, Mir, and Mag, Ryan M, J, J, Rulo, Jelly Bean, Haplo, and Don. He was missing John Frank's catfish photo. You think we should make it? You think we should make a Tinder account for Frank? I hate you sometimes. (laughs) (laughs) Bye bye. Five dudes.